Hello everyone, this is Prem Kumar. In this video, I'm going to explain you how to use the SQL functions in the report definition rule. First of all, why do we need functions in the report definition? We all know that all this data gets saved into database. So if you write a simple SQL query, you can get all these details and just display it. But in sometimes all these details can be more technical. You want to represent that data in a more user friendly way or in a more descriptive way. To achieve that in Pega, you can use the SQL functions. In Pega, we already have the terms functions and function alias. I'll explain in detail about function and function alias in a separate lecture. But in this video, we are going to talk only about the function alias that to a special class of function alias, which we call embed hyphen user function. What are the function alias that is created under embed hyphen user function can be used in the report definition rule. Okay, now let me briefly explain you the difference between the function and the function alias. In function, function is more like a technical representation where you can have the Java coding and you can do all your functionality. For example, the px concatenate string, it can concatenate the string like a string a string b it can concatenate and put it into string 3 right so the job of the function will be it will accept two input and it will give you the return output it concatenates both the strings and in function alias we can provide some meaningful description saying that the function alias can be concatenate string 1 and string 2 into string 3 you can have some kind of meaningful name or description for these functions. So similarly with the SQL functions, you can format the data into meaningful representation. I'll give you one more example. Let's say we save all this policy type, the home, the health insurance, the auto insurance as a code into the database. Let's say for home, we have home, health, we have health and for automobile, we have auto. So just some codes are getting saved into the database. Now, for the end user, we want to display it in a more meaningful way or a descriptive way. For example, for auto, we want to display it as an automobile insurance or something like that or something similar to. So you need to format the data which are stored into the database. To achieve that, you can use the SQL functions. The name SQL function is because report definition also at the end, it is going to generate some SQL queries. So definitely the functions that are related to the report definition can be called as the SQL functions. Now let's look at the business requirement which we are going to achieve. In our client's records, the client's case can go through different stages as we saw from new pending investigation, pending approval, pending payment and finally it gets resolved completed. All these are meaningful except that end users find it little different or difficult to understand the result completed. So they want to have some kind of meaningful description or meaningful translation maybe. They want to see it as closed instead of the status resolved completed. So whenever I query into database and if I get the result as resolved completed, then from the front end in the report, I want to display it as closed instead of resolved completed. I already explored there is no out of the box SQL function for this. So I will show you how to create a new SQL function and how to translate the data or format the data using the SQL function. So let's go to Disney Studio and check it out. So again, I'm going to use the same report definition, which is on the clients records class. Now, if I run this report definition, I also use the PY status work. Let's check how many cases have the status of resolved completed. Currently, I have only one case, which is in the resolved completed status. So if I run this report definition or present it to the end user, I should not see this resolved completed. Instead, I should see it as closed. So that is our business requirement, right? So for here to achieve that, we need to create a function alias on class embed user function. Before creating a new function alias, first let's check the out of the box function alias and understand it better so that we know how to create a new function alias. So function alias are part of technical category. So go to records, technical function alias, click on it. So you will see the list of function alias that are already exist. So I'm going to show you one thing like embed user function px1 if 0. Let's check what this function actually does. It gets one input, the p1 as input, and then it checks when the input is 0, it always returns 1. Otherwise, it returns the input. It means what this function actually does is whenever the value is 0, it always returns 1. Otherwise, it always returns the value. Let's say the value is 76. Then this function will return 76. If it is 10, it is going to return 10. 
but if the value is 0, it is going to return you 1. This looks little bit similar to our requirement, right? Because for our requirement, we have the status. If the status is new, we want to display new. If it is pending approval, we display pending approval. But only when the status is equal to resolved completed, then I want to display it as closed. So let's mimic the same function alias and try to create our own function alias. So this is the main advantage why I always say, always look into the out of the box rules. There you will get some idea how to build your own rule. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the action button and create. When I use this option, the class will be automatically copied. So I'm going to say here status closed if resolved completed. So this will be my function and from the name itself I can easily identify okay this is what I am doing. If it is resolved completed then I set the status to close. Create and open. Now the input parameter I am just going to mimic the same. So I am just saying like p1 or I can say i1. Little bit different. i1 and I say input status maybe. It can be text. The type can be autocomplete is fine. No problem. Default value I do need to have optional. It's not an optional. Definitely you need to give mandatory. And prom size is basically to when you get the data, you can provide some kind of prom size that is not needed. The return type we can see. Return type definitely it's going to be text. And here I think it's double because 0 and 1 are double. But for us it's going to be status. So I'm going to create it as text. Now let's look at the category. So category is mostly for the documentation. So here you can check the list of category. I'm going to use text as the category. Pattern templates. So this is one of the main thing which will be displayed when you want to use it in the report definition. Let's check how the pattern is there. I'm just going to copy this and paste it here. Pattern template and echo template. What I'm going to say is when one is resolved complete, when status is resolved completed, then return closed. Else. I return the input whatever input is there I'm going to return I'm just going to use the same thing here this is more like this will be displayed to the report definition which we will see later so don't worry about it just wait for it and finally the output format is not mandatory so let's keep it like this then this is the main thing the source so I'm just going to copy again and then paste it here so this is like a SQL function so case when input I'm going to say equal to resolved completed so don't use double quote and all because think like when you write some kind of SQL function or SQL query, you always use a single quote with single equal to. It is fine. When resolve complete, then you should return closed. Otherwise, you return the one. So this is going to be my function. Very simple, right? When the input is resolve completed, then I return closed. Otherwise, I return the same input. Now do a save. And the generated output, you can also check it from here. This will be like kind of template, whatever you inputted here, it comes here. You can have a function signature, but I'm not going to have for this moment. Okay, now we created a function alias. Let's include this function alias into the report definition. Go to the report definition rule. And from here, I want to use this function for the status, right? So I'm going to use it at this position. Use the calculation builder and then select your function. Let me use status so I can get my status here. See, it came here. Status closed if resolve completed. This is our status. When py status work, this property is resolved, then I return closed. Otherwise, I return the input. Now do a submit. So we have successfully included the function here. Do a save. Now, if you run this report definition, we see error. The error is because it says like the column closed. Okay, so it treated closed as the column. I think I didn't include it in a single quote. Let me go there and change it. Yeah, it should be under single quote whenever you specify a string. Otherwise, it treat it as a column or some keyword. So let's change this to closed. Now, if you go to report definition and run. Yeah, the result came and you should also see the status as closed and it is not resolved completed. So this is how you are going to use the SQL functions to format the data and display it in a more user friendly way or in a more descriptive way. I hope you find this video informative. See you in the next video.